If we want GRE tunnels to be secure, we add IPsec. This is critical when tunneling across the internet. IPsec can be used in two ways, transport mode and tunnel mode. We're interested in transport mode, as we already have a GRE tunnel. Transport mode just sees traffic passing across an interface and encrypts or decrypts it. It's that simple. You may wonder though, why use GRE at all if IPsec has a tunnel mode? Well, the biggest reason, in my opinion, is flexibility. GRE supports multicast and therefore dynamic routing, while IPsec tunnels do not. IPsec can be used in many different ways. I'm going to walk you through one of the simpler and more common methods of doing it on a Cisco router. The concepts work for other vendors too, of course. IPsec works between two endpoints. In our example, the two endpoints are routers. These endpoints create a connection between each other. This connection is called a phase one tunnel. This can be a little confusing. While this is called a tunnel, it has nothing to do with our GRE tunnel yet. This is just the IPsec's terminology. IPsec uses a protocol called IKE or IKE to establish the phase one tunnel. Part of its job is to authenticate the remote endpoint. The simplest authentication is a pre-shared key. This is a password that is configured on both routers. Ike checks that the passwords match between the local and remote devices. You'll notice that we're using the ISA KMP keyword. This is one of the protocols that Ike uses. Cisco have decided to use it in some of their commands. In addition to the key, we've also included an address. You can use this shared key with many different endpoints. This address can be used to limit which endpoints will be allowed to connect. If we use 0000, like we have here, we accept connections from any IP address. We also need to create the ISA KMP policy. This will contain the rest of the settings we need for phase one. We start by choosing the pre-shared key that we just configured as our method of authentication. The alternative to pre-shared keys is to use certificates with public and private key pairs. This is more secure in many ways, but it's a little bit harder to set up. If you've worked with information security before, you will have come across ciphers, hashing algorithms, and DH groups. Ciphers are used to encrypt and decrypt your data. Hashing algorithms are used for signatures, keys, and passwords. And the Diffie-Hellman group is used to exchange keys in a secure way. There are many different combinations of ciphers, hashes, and DH groups to choose from. So Ike creates a proposal to send to the other endpoint. The proposal contains the options that we're prepared to use. Both endpoints need to mutually accept each other's proposal if they are to proceed. In our example, we're going to use the 256-bit AES cipher, the 256-bit SHA hashing algorithm, and Diffie-Hellman group 19 for our proposal. These are definitely considered secure today, at the time I'm recording this. But security is a moving target, so when you go to configure this for yourself, you should check that these are still considered secure. When both ends have agreed on all parameters and have authenticated, they have established a connection. This connection is called a security association or SA. The SA is a list of all the important information used in this connection. Right, so now phase one is done, but we're still not ready to send any of our data across this connection. Phase one alone is not considered to be secure enough for our sensitive data. One reason is that we're using either pre-shared keys or certificates for authentication. They're both valid for a long time, possibly an indefinite amount of time. So if they were stolen, an attacker can observe and decrypt our traffic. So what we do instead is we dynamically create session keys. We synchronize these across our two endpoints using the phase one tunnel that we've just built. These keys are changed regularly. So if an attacker did steal our phase one keys, they would still need to find a way to steal our session keys. And even if they managed to do that, the keys would change after a while, which severely limits the amount of data that they were able to steal. So what we're talking about here is creating a phase two tunnel. This includes the keying that we just spoke about and another cipher and hashing algorithm proposal. The end result is another connection between our endpoints and another set of SAs. 
Our data is now ready to be encrypted by the phase two tunnel. The encryption is done using a protocol called Encapsulating Security Payload, or ESP. In some cases, we may also use a protocol called Authentication Header, or AH. This is not for keeping data secret like ESP does. Rather, it's used to confirm that the data hasn't been tampered with. We're keeping it simple here though, so we're not going to worry about AH at all at this time. Okay, so on a Cisco router, all these settings are defined in a transform set. The transform set includes a name, a cipher for encryption, and the hashing mode. This is also where we tell IPsec to use transport mode. The alternative is tunnel mode, but we're going to let GRE handle the tunnel and IPsec can focus on the encryption. Now that we have a bit of understanding of IPsec, we need to apply this to a GRE tunnel. On a Cisco router, we need to create a profile before it can be applied to an interface. At a minimum, we need to add in the transform set that we just created. The profile can then be added to the tunnel interface. And that's all we need to encrypt tunnel traffic. But there's still something else we need to consider. When IPsec encrypts traffic, it also adds extra headers. So we need to adjust our MTU. Be aware though that the size of the headers vary. And that depends on the ciphers and other options that we use. So it's really difficult to know exactly how big your headers are going to be. The easiest option is simply to lower the MTU by 100 bytes. And for IPv4, the MSS can be lowered 40 bytes below that. So tunneling makes the underlay look transparent. But we still need to know if there's any NAT or firewalling there. NAT can cause a lot of problems for IPsec. NAT is used to change ports and IP addresses which IPsec assumes is an attacker tampering with packets. So to resolve this, some time ago a technology called NAT Traversal was created to let IPsec be tolerant of these changes. During the phase one establishment, NAT is detected and NAT-T kicks in. It adds an extra UDP header which tricks IPsec into allowing the packet. The good news for us is that we don't need to do anything to configure NAT-T. It just works out of the box. The concern is when firewalls are in the way. If there's a firewall somewhere in the underlay, make sure it will allow GRE, ESP, ISA KMP, and NAT-T. I'm going to briefly show how to verify IPsec is working by using a real CLI. We can already see that the tunnel is up. Start by checking the phase one SAs with show crypto ISA KMP SA. There is an SA to describe each end of the tunnel. That's what the source and destination fields are all about. The other important field is the state. QM idle is a good state to be in, as it means that the phase one tunnel is up and working. If you're not getting any results here at all, then you definitely have issues. Now that we know phase one is good, we can move on to checking phase two with show crypto IPsec SA. Once again, you can see the local and remote endpoints and the port that we're making the connection on. Port 500 is ESP. If NAT-T is used, then you'll see port 4500 here. We also get to see some encryption stats. This is how we confirm that packets are indeed passing through the tunnel and getting encrypted. We can also see the lifetime of the session key. The default lifetime is measured in seconds but you can also configure an amount of data that's encrypted by those keys if you want to. When this expires, new keys are negotiated. This should be completely transparent. No data is lost while keys are being changed over. I still have a few tricks left around stability. There are must have, so please come back for the next video. Let me know what you thought of this video and if you did like it, please subscribe.